opening night of Porgy and Bess last night at the Singletary Center at the University of Kentucky. Um, I'm Richard Kagey, I'm set designer on the show, and these two gentlemen uh, are important to this whole project. <laughs> Everett McCorvey, Dr. Everett McCorvey is the head of UK Opera Theatre, and he's the person who got me involved with this and started the ball <laughs> rolling, and also has produced this pr first performance of, of this, and this is Dennis Hanthorn, who is the Zurich General Director of the Atlanta Opera, and he is, um, got interested in it because I do some work at the Atlanta Opera, and we started doing that. We'll talk a little bit more about that, but that's who the gentlemen are. How does it feel the morning after the, the opening? Well, um, I am, uh, I couldn't sleep much last night, <laughs> uh, but I'm, I was very excited. I was very excited about the excitement of the audience. Uh, I was very pleased with the performers. Uh, the technology that we're developing worked, I mean, flawlessly last night, and uh, it was just, um, it, it was a great experience in the theater. And one of the things that I kept saying to myself, this is really epic. I mean, it's an experience. Porgy and Bess is an experience all by itself, though, as, as you know, anyone who's seen the opera. Um, and um, and to, to think that this great music has uh, really been around now since the 30s and uh, is probably the most uh, popular opera uh, in the world. And, um, and to have it here in Lexington at the University of Kentucky and to have our students experience this incredible uh, production with the technology while working with the professionals, having our students um, get to know Dennis Hanthorne and the Atlanta Opera and the possibilities for cross collaborations between universities and professional opera companies I think is just fantastic and in a lot of ways I think it's going to be the model for the future. And I'm delighted that we have the opportunity to partner with uh, the Atlanta Opera on this exciting project. Well, this has been a long time coming. <laughs> <laughs> We've been working on this project for at least three years, <laughs> and it felt like we were taking the spaceship from the warehouse, put it on the launch pad, <laughs> and to have the audience response when the curtain opened up, and before the curtain completely open, the audience was applauding. Oh, yeah, that and was so exciting. Was yeah, that really was. And uh, we just felt, I, I'm sure we all three felt like proud parents yep. <laughs> <laughs> that our children yeah. were doing so well. Yeah. I really believe that this technology is cutting edge, and I know Everett agrees and, and, and mm -hmm. Richard agrees with me, and we hope and believe that this will be the way of the future as far as how uh, many productions be produced. But as a producer of opera in, uh, in Atlanta, and I know my other colleagues around the country and the world, uh, we're looking at ways to uh, be creative and uh, save money. But uh, it's not a cost saving, but it's a new technology that's interesting to the audience and it stimulates the audience mm -hmm. in a way mm -hmm. that they are used to in other um, mediums. Mm -hmm. And now this is the first time we can do this for opera. Mm -hmm. the, the production uses a combination of three-dimensional traditional scenery to a certain extent and then a whole series of screen projections that produce the backgrounds for the show. The screen projections are done on a, on a new system that it allows us to use rear projection in a really short footprint which allows us to move the screens and change their relationship to the audience. This has never been done before. We've always had rear projection, we've always had front projections in the theater, we've tried it in all kinds of different things in opera theater everywhere, but the screen always has to stay the same relationship to the audience, which means that the production becomes very static and it builds itself around the screen and you find yourself directing to that, you find yourself designing to that, and it limits. In this production, we can do this with the screen while it's projecting and therefore change its angle to the audience and its relationship to the audience. And that means that a director, a designer, has a lot more flexibility to be able to do this. And it's really, it's very, very exciting to work on it. It's been really wonderful for me over the three year period of, of working on this. But I gotta say the other thing that's really fascinating about this project, and I say this to both of you, is I think the future of the arts is 
for us to start working in collaborations that are not something you expect. And for many, many years, we had this distance between the professional theater and the professional mm -hmm. opera world and the universities. And this is bridging the gap and pulling this back together. And I think it's the only way we are going to take opera and make it into something that sells, into something that, again, becomes an important part of, of people's artistic vision. And this is so exciting to me. I, that, that, I just think this is, this is the thing I'm really happy about. And, and I also want to say the quality of your students yeah. at, at the opera program here. Um, there are students that I'm very interested in bringing to Atlanta. And, and this is a great transition mm -hmm. for those singers mm -hmm. that have worked so hard here yeah. at the University of Kentucky Opera Program that then I can come in, hear them, and then give them a chance to yes. have their professional debut. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's a very exciting opportunity to be working with them. I'm very big in, into collaborations because um, uh, our opera program is pretty much uh, privately funded. And so I knew that the way that we were going to build the opera program was to uh, collaborate with other entities within the university and also within the city. So I created a civic board. So we have a, a, a civic board called the Lexington Opera Society. And they are our fundraisers. They are our cheerleaders in the community. And uh, they are their own separate 5013C organization. And so they help support opera within Central Kentucky, primarily through UK Opera Theater. And so that was our first collaboration, and that's been going on now, gosh, over almost 15 years. And uh, they have been a tremendous asset to the university and to the program. So one of the questions that I wanted to answer in opera was how to create grand opera in theaters that were not designed to be able to support grand opera. And, um, and I've always wanted to do Porgy and Bess. It's been one of my, it's been very important in my life. I've probably performed over 600 times in this uh, production, uh, in, in the production of Porgy and Bess. And so I wanted to answer that question of how do we present grand opera, and I had the opportunity to go to a presentation of the Viz Center at the University of Kentucky. And uh, the Viz Center is a group of engineers that were creating this technology, and when I saw it, I thought, this could be the answer to what we are looking for. But I saw it and I, and I discussed with them the theatrical applications of this technology. And so the first phone call after I left the facility, the center, was to Richard Kagey. And I said, Richard, you've got to see this. How quickly can you get here? <laughs> and he was on a plane the next day and came to Lexington. And, uh, and I took him on the tour of the facility. And I think he called Dennis. <laughs> what happened is I, I, flew, I, flew from, I flew from Atlanta to here, went to the Viz Center, and as I told somebody on the phone, I went down the rabbit hole. <laughs> I was suddenly like Alice in Wonderland. The stuff they can do and the stuff they create is amazing. And I, got, and I went back to Atlanta where I was working on something for you and happened to talk to you about where I'd just been. I, and that started that. Yeah, <laughs> I remember you said, I need to see you right away. <laughs> and he said, and you told me, you said, I just have just been on this incredible journey. <laughs> and he was, you're aware that I had been, always been interested in projections and been looking at planning and trying to figure out a way to uh, produce the uh, projections for the last several years. Mm -hmm. And he said, I think we have the answer here <laughs> in a way that we all can afford to do this. Yes. Yes. And yes. so I came up to see that, this, this center, and I was just like, astonished at what they could do. Yes, yes, yes. And here we are <laughs> with a brand new production. That's of right. Porgy and Bess that can be stills and motion picture and Catfish Row. You feel like you're in oh, I Catfish can't, Row yeah. and, and then Kitty Wall, you're out on the beach. Yes. <laughs> well, and I think yeah. the most exciting part of the technology for me was that is that you get into the opera and you forget the technology all of a sudden you're into the opera and you know that scenic backdrop is back there. But it's not necessarily the star. Right. Mm -hmm. It's the star in that we are able to do it so theaters will be able to present this technology and how long did it take you to put this the, the screens up? 
Oh, I mean, it, 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 it's, the screens that set themselves go up four hours from the truck to four yeah. hours from the picture. So yeah. the total loading is around eight, eight hours. Eight hours with the eight scaffolding hours. and everything. Yeah, it's yeah. amazing. The, the screens That's are four, four hours in from truck to picture. Richard, typically I will budget two, two and a half days to load a set in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now we did it in one day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's exactly right. Uh, yeah. Unbelievable. What we saw was we saw the potentials. Then we had to sit down and we had to begin to try to see how we could make the pieces fit. Then we had to begin to figure out when to put it mm -hmm. in the schedule. Right, right, uh, and right. And we, we had other things, there were other projects and other things right. happening that made scheduling interesting. Scheduling it so that we could take advantage of the two companies using it mm -hmm. because it gives us a chance to, to air it out both times. Um, and then deciding just exactly how much three-dimensional scenery against how much mm -hmm. Uh, all of those things, and there were there were constant changes. We were we were always looking at it. We were always fussing with it until we got nearer. We also had to figure out what images were going to be on the screen and where we were going to get them, and that took some time too. And mm -hmm. we made the decision that since Porgy mm -hmm. and Bess is set in Charleston, we might want to really use Charleston images. So we went to Charleston, mm -hmm. South Carolina. We filmed. We filmed on the beaches of North Carolina because the beaches of South Carolina are too condoed heavy. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, several other locations to get the, the pieces that we needed. And again, I think for all of us, the bottom line is making opera accessible mm -hmm. and remembering that you are telling a story in music. And the fortunate thing is the three of us all agree with that. Mm -hmm. And so what we have is, yes, we have some gee whiz technology, but the gee whiz technology is not, as Everett said, not the star. What it is is it's this incredible support to the piece. And what it allows us to do is, and I take this in the hurricane mm -hmm. moment, there's a hurricane in Porgy and Bess, and when it happens, in normal productions, you have the lights darken and there's some flashes of lightning, and that's all you can do because right. that's the way it is. We actually put hurricane footage from the Weather Channel on the screens. Yeah. And suddenly what happens is Catfish Road disappears and we have the storm in relationship to the cast. And suddenly the ominous threat of a hurricane on the coast to people who have no place to go becomes part of the show and it's a support of the story it's not a gee whiz moment the audience never goes oh look at that wow yeah, i wonder how yeah, they did it right. they go oh my god it's a hurricane yeah right, and right, that's right. what you want that's and that's right. what works yeah. in this yeah. with porgy mess it's a great score great singers mm -hmm. the chorus is you know yes. such a substantial yes. part in the production yes. but but the technology the technology does not get in the way of this right. production right. however the physical production, because we can move the screens up and down stage and side to side, yes, and and create different ambiance. Mm -hmm. The production itself has a star quality about itself, Absolutely. because the set can be completely choreographed with all the dancers. And in Atlanta, what's going to be great about this? I think we're using twelve supers oh. to move the that will be that will be people that's oh, going to be different wonderful. than what you had yes, here in yes. Lexington. That will move the set. Oh, wonderful. And stagehands will move the set up and down the stage. Uh -huh, and, uh -huh. and the screens. And the screens, excuse me. Uh -huh. and, and then the townspeople oh, will be wow. moving oh, the, the, the stairs. Yeah. And, and what's so great about this, the stairs are so light. Oh, I know. The two people yeah. can yeah. move it around. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so we can choreograph yeah. this entire yeah. set yeah. with the incredible dancing yes. that Linda Johnson's going to be oh, bringing this. I'm and, really and Larry to this. And, and Larry uh, uh, Marshall. Marshall. Yes. Larry Marshall and his incredible direction. Yes, yes. Well, I've had the great pleasure of working with Larry. I, I think probably 590 of those 600 that I've done <laughs> have been with Larry Marshall at Sport Life. And uh, he, is, he was an amazing Sport Life. And the fact that now he's the major director yeah. around the world yeah. directing yeah. Porgy and Bess and the fact that he's going to be right. in Atlanta. Right. Yeah. It's, uh, a, a, and of course, along with Keith Lockhart as I, the conductor. I mean, oh my I, goodness. <laughs> Keith Lockhart, the, yeah. the conductor of the Boston Pops, yeah. <laughs> is conducting this production, yeah, and, yeah. and we're thrilled to have him coming. Oh, that's and really and from Atlanta, I mean, we were able to bring some singers from Atlanta to yes, sing this production. Yes, yes. Um, Michael Redding, yes. who grew up in Clayton County, wow. um, is singing the role of wow, Pergy. And unbeknownst to me, when we auditioned him, he had started to sing Porgy, and now seems to be the porgy of choice That's that everyone's exciting. watching yeah. as far as coming up. Yes, yes. And we're very excited that we can give Michael an opportunity to sing in his 
hometown yes. and yes. come and sing Porgy. And I think it's going to be one of his great roles That's in the future. Yeah. Well, you know, it's been such a, Porgy and Bess has been such a wonderful vehicle for African-American singers. And um, and it's great to see the the young singers coming up mm -hmm. who are now taking on these the roles mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. uh, seeing these stars created from uh, Porgy and Bess. Right. And it felt to me last night like we were birthing a new generation of Porgy and Bess that will continue right. and um, in for the next 75 years. I realized last night in the audience, there were, it was like a pretty, it was like a, a grand oh, I know, a it show. really, I people know. Were, people were into it in the sense of, what's next? Oh my well, goodness. Well, the, the most telling moment is when Morgan kills the Yeah. People were absolutely shocked. Oh, they were. Absolutely <laughs> oh, shocked. Oh, they were. You know, and, and it's like, oh, it's the story, don't it's you know this? <laughs> and, and they didn't, and, and, yeah. but that was really exciting. And it was like, it, and, and, and there again, that's a moment that has nothing to do with technology. Uh -huh. It has to do with the story, the music, the moment. That's right. And what's happened. And it's just, it's just amazing to yeah. watch an audience grab a hold of this. And part of, going back to what we were talking about, part of this business of using technology and using a different way is going to make productions like this accessible. Yes. The new HD broadcasts from the Met are making the production successful. They're very nice, they're very wonderful, mm -hmm. but they are not live. And there is nothing like sitting in that house with the 1,600 people we sat oh, in last night oh, yes, yes. and <clears throat> watching those moments. Right. When That's Serena right. finished, my man's calling now. Oh my goodness. <laughs> what a moment. It show. stopped the show. It stopped the show. Yeah. It stopped the I, show. Talk amongst yourselves. But it would, oh. but, but there you can't that and if we can keep this going and make it happen, we can make opera like this accessible in live situations to a new generation right. and it's going to change how we get those people in the door. I That's think right. Richard, you know, um, in the middle 80s when uh, opera companies started using super titles mm -hmm. and you had screens on the yes, side of yes, your yes, stage yes, yes. as far as telling the story yes. and it was such an impact on opera performances when mm -hmm. companies started using super titles, mm -hmm. above the screens above the stage. And I believe that this technology will have the same type of effect yes. on opera audiences yes, and bringing in I a agree. new group of yes. audiences and the collaboration with the UK yes. Opera Theatre mm -hmm. Program, that type of relationship with the Viz Center, it's a great way to move forward. And in Atlanta, we have the same type of relationship yes. with Morehouse College, Spelman, yes. Clark, Atlanta. Yes. We have yes. faculty members from Morehouse and Spelman that are in our course. Yes. And yes. it's an incredible Yes. Opportunity to be working with the yes. folks there in Atlanta. Yes. 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 So we're so thrilled that they're working with us on this too. Yes. The technology that this production brings to us, it allows us, Richard, in mm -hmm. order to have uh, productions in rep. Uh, yes. And we in the business, uh, you know, one yes. night it could be Porgy and Bess, and the next night it could be Butterfly, it could That's be Carmen. Right. Um, That's and right. this technology allows us to produce two operas at one time. Yes. And, and, and save money as far as production cost and rehearsal costs and not ha and not have the horrible problem of of having to strike a set right and put it up again because it's basically a load in and load out every time you do it mm -hmm. and in festivals where they do rep right. productions you're talking about a, a 12 hour off that is filled with workers working mm -hmm. to take it down and put it up mm -hmm. so the other thing that this allows is it allows for productions to tour more efficiently uh, large opera productions like Aida, so on and so forth. If you start doing that in a traditional set, the amount of trucks, the amount of things that you have to do to take around, the, it's one of the reasons the Mets stopped tour. Oh, uh, it's, years it's, ago. They it's had so no incredibly choice. expensive because you have to have so many trucks to bring in the set yeah. and to set yeah. it up at each place. It just got so expensive that, you know, that's why the opera companies don't tour. But right. with yeah. this technology, right. Right. opera companies can tour. This type of production, uh, Everett, will allow us to tour to various cities. And I'm asked all the time, is it possible for the Atlanta Opera to mount a production and take it to various cities mm -hmm. in the southeastern mm -hmm. part of the United States? Mm -hmm. And and the answer is yes, because if we rehearsed it in Atlanta, mm -hmm. or we're working with the university, right. same sort of thing, right. um, 
we could then mount it in our city, in yes. our theater, and then move it to the next city, but load it in in one day. That's right. And either right. add their course or use our That's course. Right. And it is an opportunity to spread the cost around. That's right. To still bring opera to the communities. That's right. And you can have your opera in your right. city with your name on it. That's and, right. And I think this is a way that with the relationship with the universities, with the relationship with other opera companies and our collaboration yes, yes. by developing new talent. Yes. This is a great education. It's a great uh, joint venture with all of us. And at the same time, in this economy, we are finding new ways to keep the quality very, very high, I, which the audience demands. That's right. They yeah. demand that. That's right. They don't care about your financial. <laughs> That's right. That's right. You better give me a good product give on stage. Job. That's right. And this gives us an opportunity to keep that quality where it needs to be and opera at a very high quality. Every, I know Porgy Best is a very personal project. Mm -hmm. You've visited my wife on the Porgy yeah. Best tour yes, and yes. a whole lot of things yes. like that. But it's also very exciting to watch the process of introducing students to this, bridging the gap in the professional world and making those bridges happen. <laughs> Thank exciting. you. It's exciting. Thank you. <laughs>